Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I know, ah, perfect. I know we are almost 30 minutes behind the schedule. Uh, therefore, I will focus on uh, the origin and how Cartagena's protocol is working, because I think it's, it's very relevant for, for you. And I will focus on that more than uh, giving examples on how the protocol has been applied to animals. Okay, uh, because of the environmental concerns associated with the uh, desertification, biodiversity losses, uh, water, air, air, and soil pollution. Uh, in the framework of the United Nations Conference of Environment and Development in Rio in 1992, three international treaties were generated. The United Nations Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change, another one, the Convention to Combat Desertification and Drought, and the Convention on Biological Diversity. From these three, the most important one is this one. Nowadays, the Convention on Climate Change. And some of you uh, have heard that, the, oh, in November this year, uh, between 6 to 18 November, uh, the world is going to have this COP27, okay? And that is the COP related to climate change. And it's going to be the biggest and the most important uh, meeting in the world, around 40,000 people, okay? I cannot imagine the people that are organizing this meeting, but anyway. The other, the other uh, convention, the, the one here, is the Convention of Biological, of Biological uh, Diversity. And uh, this um, Convention of Biological Diversity, uh, it's important because it has three main object objectives. Conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its components, and sharing benefits from genetic resources. Uh, in the framework of this, uh, the convention of biological diversity, uh, biotechnology is mentioned, in particular in four articles. Uh, in article 18 and 19, 16 and 19, biotechnology is considered essential to attain the convention objectives, which is a very, a very good statement. And in some other articles, number eight and number 19, uh, they establish, or uh, the convention shows the need to establish and maintain biosafety systems, in particular related to living modified organisms that could have, and here is very important because they say that uh, organisms that may have adverse effects on the conservation uh, or sustainable use of biological diversity. It's not on all living modified organisms, but by extension, uh, they say, oh, the, the convention is uh, generating like an alert on the, the use of these uh, LMOs, which uh, is understandable because the, uh, by the moment in which the, the convention was signed, uh, the convention was approved in 1992 and enforced in 1993, there were many questions around the, the use of living modified organisms. Okay, uh, as a, a result, of, uh, of these uh, articles, uh, several protocols came out. There is the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety that is enforced in uh, 2003, uh, the Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing, and the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol on Liability and Redress. Uh, in summary, we have an environmental uh, family of instruments. I don't know if it's a normal family or is it a functional family, but uh, uh, how this is how it is. And the, the thing is, we have here the, uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity, we can consider as a grandfather. This uh, father has two sons, Cartagena Protocol and the Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing. And uh, the Cartagena Protocol has a son, the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol on Liability and Redress, okay? Something important. The, the convention was uh, mentioning in four of its articles, the, 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 the word biotechnology and the interest for biotechnology, as I was showing. Cartagena's protocol is focused on biotechnology, and we are going to talk a little bit more later. And Nagoya Kuala Lumpur protocol as well, related to these biotech products. 
when the Nagoya Protocol was signed, uh, they say, oh no, maybe biotechnology is not going to be a central point. But nowadays, the Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing is taking into consideration biotechnology because of one simple topic, digital sequencing information, the famous DSI, okay? But that is just for, for sharing you some information. Now we are going to, to come back to the Cartagena Protocol. <clears throat> the objectives of Cartagena Protocol are to contribute to ensure an adequate level of protection in the field of safe transfer, handling, and use of living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology here again, that may have adverse effects on the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity, taking uh, also into account risk to human health and specifically, specifically focusing on transboundary movements. That is the reason of existence of this, of this Cartagena's protocol. This protocol was approved in 2000, uh, is in force in 2003, uh, nowadays is having 173 countries, and there are five countries from the Americas that are not part of, uh, of the Cartagena's protocol. Mm, some uh, important uh, statements or uh, some ideas that are very strong in, in the Cartagena protocol related to biotech is that first, this Cartagena protocol provides the definitions of living modified organism and modern biotechnology. There are many very good um, definitions about biotechnology, modern biotechnology and living modified organisms. Perfect. But we need to focus and we need to stay with this one. Because remember, 173 countries uh, reach the consensus. Therefore, you cannot change a single comma to these, to these uh, definitions. And I think this is very relevant because thanks to these definitions, uh, we are able to manage the definitions applied for genome editing regulation. Okay, and we will see this uh, later or uh, in the afternoon when we are talking. The second, the second point is that the Cartagena's protocol established procedures from, for transboundary movement of LMOs in the absence of national regulations. Okay, another very relevant point, and we have here, uh, Andrew, uh, who has been working a lot on this on these particular issues, the Cartagena's protocol recognizes the importance and need for agreed principles and methodology for risk assessment. Okay, and here we were uh, we were talking about uh, that in, in previous uh, 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 expositions presentations. The the other the other idea is that the Cartagena's protocol proposed and actually they have the biosafety clearinghouse mechanism. That is like a big platform of exchange for exchanging information. And this one is for me very important. Cartagena's protocol allows diverse interpretation. Essentially, Cartagena's protocol is presenting general ideas and elements to take into consideration, but is not saying how to do the things. Yeah. And that is why you see a country like Brazil having its own regulatory framework aligned with Cartagena's protocol but they have their own form to, to, to work. They have a commission with the uh, 54 members. Cartagena's protocol is not saying how many members you, you, you need to have. And it, it's just to, to send the message that Cartagena's protocol is sending just general lines, some elements that you need to take into consideration. Okay, the government bodies of the convention and its protocols are the famous for the Convention of Biological Diversity, the conference of the parties, the famous COP, okay? For some people is the infamous COP, but anyway. And for the other protocols, for the Cartagena's protocol in biosafety, Nagoya protocol on um, benefit sharing and Nagoya Kuala Lumpur protocol, they have as governing bodies, the conference of the parties serving as the meeting of the parties, MOP. And in summary, or in short, COP MOP, or in some cases, MOP. Okay, and that is very confusing for the people. Imagine you trying to talk with a journalist saying, oh yeah, I'm going to the COP. Immediately he's saying, oh yeah, the, the most important one that is related to climate change. But if you say, no, no, it's not that one, it's the COP MOP, um, what is that? And uh, the, I, I, I think we need to, to clarify these things, at least for the public. But anyway, 
Uh, since 2016, the COPs, the Conference of the Parties from the CBD, and the MOPs, all these uh, conference from these uh, uh, protocols, met in an integrated fashion, the UN, the United Nations Biodiversity Conference. Okay. And here I just want to, 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 to mention the main duties of COP and COP MOPs. Essentially, the main duty is to promote the implementation of the convention and its protocols through the decisions they take at their periodic meetings. Uh, for uh, the convention, the COP establishes thematic programs that set objectives and strategies for conserving genetic resources in each of the main types of ecosystems. And you see here uh, the, 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 the ecosystems they are focused on. And in the case of the Cartagena Protocol, the COP MOP, reviews implementation, discuss topics related to risk assessment, communication, capacity building, financial mechanism, emerging issues. And here you see uh, the, the, the list of the different meetings of COP and COP MOPs, okay? Starting from 1994 up to uh, this year is going to be between 3 and 19 December 2020, uh, 2022 in Montreal, Canada. Very nice place, but I don't know if in winter time it's going to be like that. But anyway, the other the other uh, point is that there are not just COP and COP MOP. There are some other meetings, and between COP and MOP, between COP MOPs, you have oh, the governments and organizations can submit formal comments to the secretariat. The secretariat establish open-ended online fora on specific topics. Uh, the Secretariat as well, they can uh, call ATEC groups. ATEC is for ad hoc technical expert groups. And these groups uh, are responding to COP MOP uh, orientations or, uh, or requirements. And that is why they establish ATECs on specific issues like uh, or specific topics like LMO risk assessment, synthetic biology, DSI, socioeconomic considerations, et cetera. And this ATEC could spend years, 10 years, discussing the same thing, starting here and doing a very nice thing in order to arrive to the same point, because that is the thing that is happening. And they have uh, another, another meeting that is the SABSTA for subsidiary body on scientific, technical, and technological advice. And the SBI, the subsidiary body for implementation. This is more administrative one. But uh, here, just to show you, here is the list of the SABSTA meetings. The COP mobs every two years, SABSTA meeting every year. And we don't have time to, to, to check here. Just to mention that this SABSTA is a kind of preparatory COP MOP, okay? And this year, uh, this meeting was carried out in Geneva. Uh, um, essentially, it was in March, uh, very nice. But at the end, no conclusion, no uh, agreement was reached and was necessary to generate another meeting in Nairobi, in Kenya. And the result was the same, nothing clear. But anyway, how the, 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 the process work? The COP MOP identifies topics to be discussed at the next COP MOP, and they uh, ask for studies, or they say, okay, the uh, governments and organization, please submit your ideas. Then the secretariat organized this open-ended online fora, and the conclusions from this uh, fora going to ATEX, and the ATEX make the discussion and generate documents that going to SABSTA. And the SABSTA analyze the documents and then going to the next COP MOP. And in the COP MOP, they are, they are uh, approved. And here you see the mechanism in which they are in contact with the Cartagena's protocol. And this is for the administrative part. And now there is a little monster that is appearing that is called the open-ended working group on the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And for me, that could be a very, a very difficult instrument to manage because personally, they want to solve world problems by using this document. And that is not, that is not possible. Anyway, uh, just to, to, to finalize uh, how the COP MOPs are functioning, the participants are officially delegated by parties. Therefore, if you want to participate there, you need to ask your focal point in order to be registered in the, in the meeting. Uh, observers can assist and express their ideas, but in plenary session, they, they must be supported by parties. 
a country, you, you talk and you say, okay, this is my idea. And then the uh, the chair of the session is asking, okay, who which party is supporting uh, this statement? And there is a country that must say, okay, I support that. If there is no a, a country supporting you, you could have the best possible idea. Nobody uh, takes care and is not going to be in the in the acts. A different type of meetings in cop mobs and subsidiary body exist, and you have plenary session, working groups, contact groups, friends of the chair. And in each uh, meeting, different category of documents are appearing. For example, official documents, uh, plenary session documents, uh, statements, information, notification, and other. And you have hundreds of pages about that, and you can access the official documents for the next session here in this in this link. And Remember that participation in COPMOP uh, is very important uh, also for those who do not attend because silence implies acceptance. And the incorporation of the results of these discussions uh, into national systems uh, is something that, that, that is the objective of these, of these um, uh, instruments. You discuss and then you generate a conclusion and you need to implement this conclusion in your country. That is why it's very important for your country to be there and to discuss. Uh, it is important to have a thorough understanding of terms and definitions as they become key elements for interpretation at the national and global levels. And we as ICA, we have been uh, working in these preparatory meetings for COP MOPs uh, from March 2020 in a monthly basis. And if you want, you can have uh, the information, access the presentations and the, the Zoom sessions. And that was I wanted to say in this 16 minutes, 18 seconds. Thank you very much.